At first, let's know what are debt financing and equity financing. Then we'll see an example how they work in real world. Let's start with equity financing. Equity financing involves selling a portion of a company's equity in return for capital. For example, the owner of company XYZ might need to raise capital to fund business expansion. The owner decides to give up 10% of ownership in the company and sell it to an investor in return for capital. That investor now owns 10% of the company and has a voice in all business decisions going forward. Now let's know what is debt financing. Money raised by the company in the form of borrowed capital is known as debt financing. It represents that the company owes money towards another person or entity. They are the cheapest source of finance as their cost of capital is lower than the cost of equity and preference shares. Funds raised through debt financing are to be repaid after the expiry of the specific term. As we have known what are debt financing and equity financing, now we should know that how they work in real world. Now let's see an example. Suppose you run a small business and you need 40,000 USD of financing. You can either take out a 40,000 bank loan at a 10% interest rate or you can sell a 25% stake in your business to your neighbor for 40,000. Suppose your business earns a 20,000 profit during the next year. If you took the bank loan, your interest expense would be 4,000, leaving you with 16,000 in profit. Here, yeah, don't make mistake. Do not think that you will cut 10% on your 20,000 20, profit. No, you have to cut that 10% on the 40,000 that you took loan from the bank. So 10% of 40,000 is 4,000. Now you have to deduct this 4,000 from your 20,000 profit, leaving you 16,000 in your hand. Conversely, had you used equity financing, you would have zero debt and as a result, no interest expense, but would keep you only 75% of your profit because the other 25% being owned by your neighbor or shareholder. Therefore, your personal profit would be 15,000, which is 75% of 20,000, and your 5,000 would be your sh in your shareholder's hand. From this example, you can see how it is less expensive for you as the original shareholder of your company to issue debt as opposed to equity. Taxes make the situation even better. If you had a debt since interest expenses deducted from earning before income taxes are levied, thus acting as a tax shield, although we have ignored taxes in the example for the sake of simplicity. Of course, the advantage of uh, the fixed interest nature of debt can also be an disadvantage. It presents a fixed expense, thus increasing a company's risk. Going back to our example, Suppose your company only earned 5,000 during the next year instead of 20,000. With debt financing, you still have the same 4,000 of interest to pay. This amount is fixed. So you would have uh, just 1,000 in your hand, right? Because you have to give that 4,000 interest, right? That's your expense. So you're having 1,000 in your hand from that 5,000 profit. With equity, you again have no interest expense, but this time you can only keep 75%, right? So every time you can keep 75% from the profit, no matter how much the profit is. Now, if you keep 75% profit, this will leave you with $3,750, right? So 5,000, 75,000 of 5,000 is, 75% of 5,000 is 3,750. Dollar. Here we can see that debt financing is more expensive that, than equity financing. Now, however, if a company fails to generate enough cash, the fixed cost nature of debt can prove too burdensome. Okay, the basic idea represents the risk associated with debt financing. 
Now the question is which is cheaper, debt or equity? Debt is cheaper than equity for several reasons. This the, the primary reason for this is however that uh, debt comes without tax. This simply means that when we choose debt financing, it lowers our income tax because it helps remove the interest accruable on the debt on the earning before interest tax. But if we look back our last example where we saw that equity financing is cheaper than debt financing, so we can say that it depends. Sometimes uh, equity financing can be even cheaper than debt financing but maximum time in general debt financing is cheaper than equity financing. You have to remember that too much debt financing and too much equity financing both can be expensive. So let's see how too much debt financing can be expensive. While the cost of debt is usually lower than the cost of equity for the reasons mentioned above, taking on too much debt will cause the cost of debt to rise above the cost of equity. This is because the biggest factor influencing the cost of debt is the loan interest rate. In the case of issuing bonds or the bond, uh, bond coupon rate, as a business as a business takes on more and more debt, its probability of defaulting on its debt increases. This is because more debt equals higher interest payments. If a business experiences a slow sales period and cannot generate sufficient cash to pay its bondholders, it may go into default. Therefore, debt investors will demand a higher return from companies with a lot of debt in order to compensate them for the additional risks they are taking on. This higher required return manifests itself in the form of higher interest rate. Now that we have understood why too much debt financing is expensive, let's know why too much equity financing is also expensive. The cost of equity is generally higher than the cost of debt since equity investors take on, take on more risks when purchasing a company's stock as opposed to a company's bond. Therefore, an equity investor will demand higher returns an equity risk premium than the equivalent bond investor to compensate him or her for the additional risks that he or she is taking on when purchasing stock. Investing in stocks is riskier than investing in bonds because of a number of factors. For example, the stock market has a higher volatility of returns than the bond market. Stockholders have a lower claim on company assets in case of company default. Capital gains are not a guarantee. Dividends are decretionary. For example, a company has no legal obligations to issue dividends.